So this was a very controversial over uh, from the, the, because J. Harlan Bretz, who was the geologist who first theorized this, let's see, here he is right here. Uh, he was considered a crackpot because he was talking about giant floods back in the 1920s and 30s. But, of course, he was proven right and ended up being the recipient of the Penrose Medal in his in his 90s. So he was the first one to speculate? Yeah. And yeah. what was his reasoning? Like, where where did he see the evidence for the for some sort of a flooding? He was he was doing research along the Columbia River, and he kept seeing evidence like of these gigantic gravel bars and boulders and things that seemed out of place. And he actually, in fact, in 1910 is when he got interested in this, and he saw. In fact, I'll pull this up. I'll go back to Google Maps, and there was a newly released map that came out uh, that was this feature right here. And in a minute, I'll show you some drone footage of this feature. He was look, This new topographic map came out in 1910, and he was regularly getting maps. He loved to look at maps. And he was looking at this feature, and he said, what the hell is the explanation for this? And this is what started him on this quest, this thing right here. It's called Potholes Cataract. And Potholes Cataract is a giant erosional feature in the basalt, the edge of the basalt plateau. And the water came from the right. And what you have here, we'll zoom in. You see this kind of round hole right here? Yes. That round pool? That is a result of what's called colking. This is colking. When the water gets so turbulent that it's doing this like a tornado. And it literally can drill into the rock in a matter of days. It can drill. And what you see here is the evidence of gigantic turbulence. And this is called a recessional cataract. Can so as the water pours over this, picture you've got you've got the rock. Okay, so the water is pouring over it. And as it does, as it pours over, it's eroding the wall of the cataract back. So it's receding. And then it's going to keep receding until there's no more water. And at the time the spigots, the flood spigots are turned off, you're now left with this fossil feature. Is there a geological format, like a, 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 a style of like what you're calling it, colking? Is that what you're saying? K O L K I N G. Is there something that it does to the walls of that particular lake that make it evident that it was done that way? Like, does it leave like, like almost like a water drill? Like you know, a the, drill the would leave is, markings. Is the holes drilled in the rock? Oh, that's the evidence. And yeah, and I mean, we can see turbulence in modern water flows, but the thing is, to do something like this, you have to have extremely deep, extremely fast-moving turbulent water and sustained for maybe in this case a few weeks. So a few weeks made that lake just just by water. Oh spinning yeah, a few and weeks made this whole stone? feature right here. And what you have is you have two alcoves. Here's the north alcove and the south alcove, separated by what's called a rock blade. And that rock blade, if that water had continued to pour over for another few days, that rock blade would have been gone. Completely gone. So it's just spinning at a furious pace, massive amounts of water, mm -hmm. and it's drilling into the stone. And how deep is it? Well, we can kind of estimate because the major discharge point of this water was right down here. And look at this terrain. That mm. is a terrain that has been tortured by extreme shear forces of water. Here it would have been about 400 feet deep. The width of this is about nine miles. So you got to picture a river 400 feet deep, nine miles wide, and it's probably moving at 50 miles an hour, the water. Um, and so we can go over here. This is a ridge separating this basin area here from the Columbia River. There were another spillover point was right here. It also has two alcoves with a rock blade. If we go back to Dry Falls Cataract, which is up here, you will see 
two alcoves, a rock blade, and you'll see that there's now a separation here. Because what's happening is this rock blade is being washed away. And again, had the, had the water flow continued for another week or two, this rock blade would have been gone. Now, is there a conventional explanation for these features? Do they, do they try to come up with some other alternative explanation? No, it's gigantic floods. Gigantic floods, yeah. It's, it's pretty much accepted at this point. The, what, what's controversial is what caused. And the speed of it? No, the speed of it's pretty much accepted. Really? Oh, yeah. Even yeah. the speed of that caulking, like the, the cause of that, that's yeah, accepted? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, and what, are the, I mean, what explanation would they give for something that is causing that much water to pass through an area that quickly? Well, the draining of this lake. Right, but that doesn't make any sense to you. Doesn't make sense to me, no. Um, but it, and this all co coincides on the timeline of the Younger Dryas impact theory. This is controversial, but yes, I'm thinking that there was at least maybe three episodes of catastrophic flooding imprinted in this landscape. The first one, I would speculate, was at 14,600. Second one would have been Younger Dryas, and the third one would have been 11,600. Now, I know that they've found evidence of uh, human beings in North America that predate 11,000 years. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Do, do they, is there an understanding of like if this impact theory is correct and if it did uh, greatly diminish the population of people that are living in North America, where did they concentrate? Where did the survivors primarily come from? Do we know that? No, no, because it, it appears there was a hiatus of about a half a millennium. Really? And then you have a really a, a different cultural group showing up called the Folsom culture. And, and they came from somewhere else? I don't know. They don't know. Somebody probably has ideas on it. I don't know. But, you know, I, I, would, I, I would like to be three people. Then I might be able to research <laughs> all of this. Because I'm just thinking, like, where would be a safe place to survive? Like, with the melting of these ice caps at such a rapid rate. And the you, would not you would not have wanted to have been in North America. You don't want to be in Wisconsin. No, you don't want to be in Wisconsin. No, so you, you don't want to be in North America, period. Even in Mexico? Even all the way down there? Mexico was, uh, let's see Oh, here. my God. So we're going to. I'm going to pull forward here. Let's see if we can get uh, – I'm going to show you some – oh, here we go, potholes coolie. So here we go. This is drone footage of what we were just looking mm. at. There's oh, wow. the rock blade. We're looking right at the rock blade. Oh, God, it looks like something that was destroyed by water. Water is coming towards us. It makes sense if you look at it from above. It's so much different. I mean, topologically, when you're looking at a map and it shows the features – it makes sense, but this you re you go when you saw that that one rock feature that you just showed, mm -hmm. you go, oh yeah, I could see that being from water. I mean, it just from what I know about erosion, it's not a lot, but it completely makes sense. Mm -hmm. It just looks like it. And so this was all carved by water, and this is all carved very rapidly, very rapidly, by floods that are really way, way beyond anything experienced in historical times. And so the idea is that these impacts, did, was the, is the idea that they slammed right into the ice cap? That's what I think. That's what I would theorize. I, I, you know. And because of the extreme heat and the extreme velocity... It has the. I mean, you're you're looking at you know one impact could be the equivalent of a million atomic bombs. Holy shit! Oh yeah. <laughs> so look at this this rock blade here, and here you can see. Look, there's that round lake we were looking at. Yeah. And I don't know if you can even see people in this. I've got one where you, where some of us are standing on the rock blade, and we look like little specks. When you're looking at it from this perspective, God, it does make sense. It makes sense that this is water caused mm -hmm. and that this is by massive amounts of water. Yeah. But I just, my, my understanding of uh, erosion is not enough to understand that this was done quickly. Well, as I have but said, sense. you can look at photos, you can look at stuff like this. You don't really comprehend it, though, until you've been th across those landscapes and experienced them firsthand, knowing what the story is. Mm. You come away, I mean, it's it's like a, it's almost like an acid trip in a way. It's so mind-stretching 
when you begin to see this stuff firsthand that you really realize, oh, my God, there have been forces unleashed on this planet that utterly dwarf anything that we humans have yet been able to, to do. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the clip, don't forget to hit like, share it with a friend, and subscribe for more.